ステリーハンター監督。Hello, I'm Handkun and Kotaro. I've got a question for you all. Have you ever heard of the term the Great Reset? The Great Reset? What's that? Is it something tasty? For those who don't know, to put it simply, the Great Reset is about completely resetting and rebuilding our current societal system to create a better society. So you're saying the whole system we've got now would change? Does that mean all the debt I have would just disappear? It might just happen. Since 2024, The likelihood of the Great Reset happening has increased significantly. But who's really behind the Great Reset? It's the world's elite and the wealthy trying to initiate it. And why? They aim to create a new controlled society. And the Great Reset is their means to do so. The current society often faces difficulties because of money. If a new system is created, there's a possibility that everyone could become happier. That's possible. I think a lot of people are feeling stuck with the current state of the world. I bet many watching this video feel the same. Without some significant change, there's this fear that the world as we know it might just continue on forever. But the big question remains. Will the Great Reset truly improve the world? Or perhaps not? Capitalism's Breaking Point Today's world is capitalist, created by the world's ruling elites, such as the Rockefellers and Rothschilds. These two families are often mentioned in urban legends, and they are the ones attempting to carry out the Great Reset. The Rothschild family is a prominent European financial dynasty. That made its name in the banking industry in the late 18th century. As a result, the Rothschilds established a leadership position in the international financial markets and amassed a vast fortune within the framework of modern capitalism. On the other hand, the Rockefellers are an American financial dynasty. The wealth of the Rockefeller family, when converted to today's values, easily exceeds $680 billion. There are theories suggesting that they might be involved in the wars happening today, even being labeled as warmongers. It is said that the Rockefeller family still manages globally scaled oil related businesses, conducting energy business in over 200 countries around the world. This raises a question why would such ultra wealthy capitalists, who have succeeded within the capitalist system, seek to implement the Great Reset? Purportedly aimed at eliminating the wealth gap. The answer lies in their perception that the existing capitalist system has reached its limits, and there is a desire among them to establish a new system of governance. The concept of nobility, which is unfamiliar and has been dismantled in places like Japan, might be something they aim to reintroduce or emulate globally, suggesting a shift towards a system that resembles historical structures of nobility or royalty. If that were true, What nobility and royalty would be scared of the most is indeed revolution. The emergence of an extraordinary hero from the common people threatening their existence is something they would dislike. Recent years have demonstrated that such occurrences are possible in a capitalist society, revealing its potential for significant upheaval and change. The emergence of IT companies has introduced entities that rapidly grew beyond the control of traditional financial dynasties. Although efforts have been made to integrate them, the advancement of IT technology has had a significant impact on the world. Enough to be called the Fourth Industrial Revolution. This revolution led to the rise of GAFAM, Google, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, and Microsoft. These five companies have tremendous influence. The services these companies provide are used not only in America, but by people around the world. For example, YouTube, ex formerly Twitter, Instagram, Apple Computers, and Windows are widely used globally. In reality, the market capitalization of the GAFAM companies has increased approximately four to eight times over the past decade. Apple, Leading the market capitalization rankings, 
has reached a market cap of about $3.3 trillion, and the combined market cap of the five companies is around $8 trillion. Their value is said to revolve even that of the ruling elite, wielding immense influence, a notion that is also discussed within urban legend circles. Additionally, entrepreneurs with significant individual influence, such as Elon Musk, have emerged within a single generation. In contrast, nobility often involves repeated successions, as seen with titles like Louis X, where titles are passed down through generations to maintain the status of the elite and nobility. While it's unclear whether it's true, in countries like the United Kingdom and Japan, where remnants of nobility still exist, it's said that those considered part of the upper class are expected to have families that have continued for at least three generations for their status to be taken seriously. In the historic city of Kyoto, Japan, opening a shop for 50 years is considered just reaching full proficiency. If it's only been 10 years, it's still seen as quite inexperienced. The reason is that in Kyoto, there are many businesses that have continued for 100 years, 200 years, or even longer. Amidst this backdrop, IT companies are rapidly expanding their businesses through cutting-edge technology. In fact, Elon Musk's statements have such a significant influence that they can greatly affect stock prices. There are even rumors that he has friends who are aliens. The social reforms originating from IT companies primarily in the United States, may not be what the Rothschild family intended. It's possible that these are the actions of rogue elements acting independently. The ruling elites likely wish to control such developments. Building a management system. So how would they construct this control system? While the specifics of the control system are somewhat envisioned, the means to achieve it necessitate the Great Reset, proposing to reset everything while it may sound unrealistic, it's far from being someone else's concern. For example, let's discuss this in the context of Japan. The Japanese people have experienced something similar to the Great Reset in the past, though it wasn't called by that name. One example is the freezing of bank deposits. Imagine everyone has their money deposited in banks, and then one day suddenly it becomes impossible to withdraw it. This is said to be for understanding the wealth of citizens, to expose tax evasion or avoidance. But fundamentally, it's often done to secure the state's financial resources. Indeed, in countries with high levels of debt, bank freezes are more likely to occur. You may have seen in textbooks or news reports images of many people lining up at banks trying to withdraw their money, using the nation's wealth to pay off the country's debt for such an incredibly unfair reason, can be understood by comparing the country's income and debt. In the past, bank freezes have occurred at the following debt-to-GDP ratios. Cyprus at 102%, Argentina at 147%, and Lebanon at 152%. These countries experience bank freezes at these levels. In comparison, Japan's current debt-to-GDP ratio is at 262%. Japan is often mentioned for its substantial debt which at 262% surpasses Cyprus's 102%, where a bank free soccer red, and even Venezuela's 240%, ranking it as the highest in the world. Given these figures, the possibility of a bank freeze in Japan is not out of the question. The purpose behind such a freeze would be to control inflation. While inflation typically raises concerns about rising prices, it's worth noting that in 2024, new currency notes are scheduled to be issued in Japan. This issuance of new currency is said to be closely related to the effort. In the past, bank freezes in Japan involved not just rendering old notes unusable with the issuance of new currency, but also changing the unit of currency itself to suppress inflation. To illustrate with an exaggerated example, imagine needing 10 old 10,000 yen notes to exchange for one new 10,000 yen note. This would effectively reduce the citizen's wealth to one-tenth of its value. If you needed what was previously valued at 100,000 yen to obtain a new 10,000 yen note, it means your assets have been reduced by 90%. If the Great Reset were to implement such a mechanism, it could potentially lead to significant civil unrest. The point here is that by forcibly reducing assets and decreasing the public's desire to purchase, inflation can be controlled. 
this touches on the understanding of national wealth, the country's debt, and inflation, all of which perfectly apply to the current situation in Japan. In Japan, it's interesting to note that Eiichi Shibusawa will be featured on the new banknotes. Exactly. There was a bank freeze in Japan right after World War II in 1946. At that time, the Minister of Finance was Keizo Shibusawa, Eiichi Shibusawa's grandson. It makes one wonder if this is a mere coincidence or if it carries a message from the government. There's a rumor that the Rothschilds are among the shareholders of the Bank of Japan. This suggests that the groundwork for controlling the country's economy might already be in place. The Rothschilds are also said to be shareholders of the Federal Reserve in the United States. It's a well-known story that when the United States was being established, the Rothschilds claimed they didn't care what the government did, as long as they had control over the nation's currency issuance. It's a famous story suggesting they really might have the control. Interestingly, whenever there's an attempt to bring the currency issuance rights back to the national level in the US, the president who tried it somehow end up assassinated. In the world of urban legends, this is often cited as particularly sinister. In this capitalist society, it's understood that a small ruling class controls everything. Even if a company becomes powerful, it's a tremendous challenge to stand up against these individuals. However, the emergence of figures like Elon Musk, who gains substantial power is likely annoying to them. They might be planning things like the Great Reset or issuing new banknotes to secretly diminish our assets when the world economy grows beyond their control. It might sound like a conspiracy theory, but some believe all of this is part of a planned agenda. The New Order, Metaverse Society The ruling class finds it increasingly difficult to control wealth or money in the current environment. This is because money now exists both in the form of physical cash and electronic payments. Electronic payments have emerged rapidly in recent years and are viewed with suspicion. The reason for this is that electronic formats allow for the complete control over the quantity of money. What do the rulers want? They aim to digitize everything. Making all monetary transactions digital simplifies their management. But how to accomplish this digitization? Some people will switch to digital for convenience upon suggestion, but not everyone will. Imagine being told that the only way to purchase something you really like is through electronic payment. Wouldn't you then learn to use an electronic payment app? If something appealing, like going to an amusement park with your family, requires electronic payment only, you're likely to adapt. Regardless of the situation, stimulating human desire to purchase through what they want can be a powerful motivator. This could be particularly effective in the metaverse, where creating incredibly engaging experiences in a virtual world might lead to widespread adoption of cashless payments. We're moving towards an era where money is perceived purely as numbers. The plan in question is referred to as the World Revolutionary Action Plan. It is said that the original Rothschild, Maya Amschel Rothschild, at the age of 30, gathered 12 trustworthy and influential individuals for a secret meeting in Frankfurt. It was there that they supposedly crafted the World Revolutionary Action Plan. This plan aims to monopolize global labor and resources with the ultimate goal of establishing a world government or a unified global governance. As of now, such a government has not been established, so it remains a part of their plans. Within these plans, it's mentioned that achieving the final goal of a world government would require massive monopolies and the accumulation of vast wealth. Currently, the disparity between the rich and the poor is incredibly wide, with data indicating that the top 10% of the world's population holds 82% of the world's wealth. This demonstrates that massive monopolization is indeed happening. However, the reason a unified government has not yet been established is due to geopolitical issues and historical complexities. As a solution to these problems, the idea is to create a new digital world which is where the concept of the metaverse comes into play. In the realm of the internet, it's possible to monitor everyone's actions, 
and logs of these activities are kept. The restrictions on going out that occurred a few years ago are speculated by some to have been an event that made it easier to focus on the world of the metaverse, possibly serving as a sort of preliminary experiment. The global lockdowns demonstrated that restricting people's movements worldwide could significantly clean up the environment. Additionally, the adoption of remote work has enabled the logging of activities, with some companies even requiring employees to keep their cameras on during work, which is quite alarming. This approach suggests a move towards managing the digital world, specifically the metaverse. If it's possible to manage everyone logged into the metaverse collectively, it could lead to monopolization on an even larger scale. This borderless virtual world may necessitate new laws and a new government, leading to a new world order. This new world might be monopolized, with efforts to establish a unified world government within the metaverse. Indeed, the metaverse market is clearly expanding. Such a rapid doubling in value is unprecedented, yet it's happening right now. Indeed, the launch of the new Apple Vision Pro has once again heightened interest in the metaverse. It was astute of the ruling class to coax IT companies into collaboration rather than opposition, working together to shape the future world. This, in turn, promotes the use of the metaverse, where individual access allows for more detailed oversight. While some may question the foundation of these discussions, it's important to remember that, at its simplest, a banknote is just paper with images and text printed on it. However, the discussions and plans concerning the metaverse and global oversight are taken seriously by those in power. The Davos meeting in 2021 garnered significant attention. The Davos meeting is the annual assembly conducted in Davos, Switzerland, by the World Economic Forum an international institution committed to improving the state of the world. Founded by Swiss economist Klaus Schwab, the World Economic Forum is an organization that studies global, regional, and industrial challenges and discussions beyond national boundaries. The participants of the Davos meeting include top executives from major corporations worldwide and politicians from various countries, making it a major event. In the past, the meeting has seen participation from prominent figures like Amazon's founder Jeff Bezos, Microsoft's founder Bill Gates, former German Chancellor Angela Merkel, and former US President Donald Trump, among others. Thus, while the Davos meeting is a serious conference dedicated to examining global issues, it is suggested that this meeting may indeed play a role in determining the direction of the world. In fact, the agenda for the 2021 meeting focused on the Great Reset, during which three key points were outlined regarding the initiative. The first point of the Great Reset, discussed at the 2021 Davos meeting, focuses on creating a more equitable market. The goal is to reduce the wealth gap and move towards greater economic equality. The second point involves the establishment of new corporate investment programs. Rather than focusing solely on a company's financial health, these programs also evaluate how companies consider environmental and social factors, as well as governance, essentially their alignment with Sustainable Development Goals (SDGs). When companies seek financing from banks, they might be asked about their engagement with SDGs, and such criteria are becoming increasingly important in investment decisions. The third point encourages cross-sector collaboration on digital technologies, aiming for decisive technological development. This focus was significantly influenced by the global pandemic caused by the coronavirus. In 2021, the pandemic had a profound impact worldwide, particularly the emphasis on enhancing cooperation in the field of digital technology reflects a collective intent to address and solve global crises like the pandemic more effectively. At the Davos meeting, various issues were discussed, and some might wonder if these discussions will lead to real change. Yet, considering recent events, there might not be much time left for doubt. Notably, during a Davos meeting from December 2nd to 4th, 2023, there was a significant occurrence that could indicate the beginning of the Great Reset. The price of gold reached its highest level ever. This event has led to discussions suggesting that holding gold could be a prudent measure in anticipation of the Great Reset, implying that assets in currencies like the dollar or yen might be less secure. 
The rise in gold prices during the meeting has fueled speculation about whether global leaders may have coordinated actions to secure their wealth, highlighting the ease with which such financial moves could be orchestrated if countries work together. However, it's important to remember that these are still speculations. Indeed, the world is complex, filled with diverse nations, cultures and religions, each with its own circumstances, making a simple reset seem implausible. However, it's possible to see the beginnings of significant change, even if it's not an immediate or easy transformation. These shifts might be gradual, as global challenges prompt collective responses and innovations, leading us into new ways of thinking and interacting. The real impact and direction of these changes will unfold over time, influenced by the actions of individuals, communities and countries worldwide. One reason for this potential transformation is the current instability of the global financial system, with the United States leading the world economy. The New York Stock Exchange and the Dow Jones Industrial Average in the US have been recording all-time highs. As the US economy is central to the global economy, fluctuations within it can have worldwide impacts. For example, the Lehman Brothers collapse, although an American event, had significant repercussions globally. This interconnectedness highlights how changes in one part of the world can influence the entire global financial landscape. In Japan, the economic situation in the United States has a significant impact on the Japanese economy. There's talk that the Nikkei stock average could potentially surpass its peak bubble era high. However, unlike in the United States, where a booming stock market often reflects the economy's health, in Japan, rising stock prices do not necessarily indicate economic prosperity. The Japanese yen has weakened significantly, reaching 150 yen to the dollar, and price increases for energy have led to soaring inflation. At the same time, there's little news of wages increasing for workers in companies. Therefore, many experts warn that this bubble could burst at any time. And if it does, it could lead to a major depression, the likes of which are seen once in a century. We might be heading towards a time when the digital economy takes center stage, especially if we face another global financial crisis. The traditional way of using paper money could be phased out, making way for a reset towards digital transactions. Imagine a future where everyone gets a basic income in digital currency, or during tough times, people are offered digital coupons to help make ends meet. If faced with a choice between getting $100 in cash or $500 in digital money, most people would likely choose the digital option. This suggests a potential move towards preferring digital financial methods over traditional cash. There's worry that ongoing conflicts around the world could lead to bigger changes, possibly even a reset of sorts. It's been almost two years since Russia invaded Ukraine, and the situation is still stuck without much progress. The Defence Minister of Denmark mentioned that there's information suggesting Russia might attack countries in NATO within the next few years, though Russia denies this. With no end in sight for the war in Ukraine and the conflict between Israel and Gaza also continuing, there's a fear these could spark an even bigger conflict, potentially leading to a third world war. Some people suggest that wars could be used as reasons for actions like bank freezes, especially since the last big freeze happened in 1946, right after World War II ended. This makes us wonder about the future we're heading towards. Is it going to bring us happiness? Or should we be hoping to avoid more sad events? So laying out theories like this, it's clear that the world is currently in a state of tension in many aspects as of 2024. The possibility of something like the Great Reset being rumored indicates there's quite a substantial basis for these discussions. It seems the ruling elite might be ready to endure some discomfort to ensure they can live like nobility or royalty, now and forever. They might be planning to keep us tamed like slaves, enticing us with simple rules like basic income. Was today's discussion fact or fiction? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, bye bye! bye.